Hello, church. It is so good to see you. It's so good to see your beautiful faces in the flesh. Isn't it great? Well, I'm just going to ask you to remain standing just for a few moments because I would love to pray for you. And, and if I haven't met you yet, hello, my name is Selena. And as Kat said, I, along with my husband, Andrew, we're part of the team here in Hillsong, Denmark and Malmo. And it's just such an honor to be with you this afternoon to bring the word. And I'm actually really excited about it. I'm just really believing that the word that I'm about to share and the passage of scripture that we're going to turn to in a few moments, I'm just believing that this one word is going to be used in many different ways to minister to each individual that's in this place. Because we serve a God who sees us collectively and corporately, but sees you individually as well. So we're going to pray to that end. Are you ready? Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that we can gather here today. And I thank you for every single person that has just made the effort to get here. And you see how their morning has been. You see everything that has been taking place over the past week in their lives. And you know what's on their mind right now and the things that are going to be taking place in the week ahead. And I thank you, God, that when we come together on a Sunday and that we, and that we worship you and, and we gather around your word, I thank you that you minister into our future, God. God, that already that there are going to be words that are going to be spoken, that are going to help people tomorrow, they are going to help people on Wednesday afternoon, on Thursday at lunchtime, on Saturday morning, Lord Jesus, for that is your word. And so we just commit this time to you and welcome you into this place, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, and everyone said, amen. amen. Can we thank our worship team for leading us so beautifully? You guys are phenomenal. And you may be seated. You may be seated. Can you put your hand up if this is your first time being in this building? Since we are, ah, oh, so many of you, welcome. It is so good to have you here. And it's just so fantastic that we're able to gather once again in a building and, of course, abiding by all the different, you know, regulations of the government just to keep everybody safe and healthy. And, uh, you probably would have noticed that on the platform with me is some Lego. I noticed some of you kind of eyeing it off, wondering what is going on today. And yes, I've got Lego up here because I want to share with you, I want to begin by sharing just an event of something that took place in early April when we were in the midst of Denmark's lockdown period. And my husband, Andrew, and I, we were working from home and we have an eight-year-old daughter called Annika, and she was home doing homeschooling. And we have a four-year-old called Freddie, or Frederick, and uh, obviously not a Berner Hayward home with us as well. And so it was a season of navigating work and schooling and keeping everybody happy and loving each other. That was the goal. When Andrew and I were talking about it, like the goal is that we come out of this still all in love with each other and loving each other and still four in the family. And so we achieved it, I think. However, there was a moment, one particular morning in early April where I didn't know if we were going to get through the day. And it was one of those mornings where it started off really well. Andrew and Annika and I, we were in the kitchen and we were preparing some food when I suddenly noticed that things were too quiet. You get what I mean? Just Freddie was nowhere to be heard. I couldn't hear him anywhere. The last I'd seen him, he was in the bedroom that he shares with Annika playing. But suddenly things had gone very quiet. And as a parent, that can either be a really good thing or it can be a not so good thing. And just as I was getting ready to go and have a look around for him, just to check up for him, on him, I suddenly heard something that no parent wants to hear. And it was the sound of a loud crash, followed by multiple crashes, smaller crashes, then a scream and then crying. And at that point, Andrew and I just stopped everything we were doing, and with Annika and Toe, we ran out of the kitchen, ran down the hallway, ran into the bedroom. Now, in the Word of God, it says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And it was interesting because it revealed a lot that moment, because both Andrew and I looked in the bedroom and we both cried out, Frederick, where Annika was more, my Lego. It was very clear what the priorities were that day for each of us. But once we realized that Frederick was actually okay, we were then left to assess the damage. 
And unfortunately, Annika's pride and joy, her Lego friends display, had come crashing down onto the ground and was broken into literally hundreds of pieces. She loves Lego friends and she has five particular sets, one of them which is here, which she absolutely loves. And somehow Freddie had managed to open up just enough drawers all at once to cause the chest of drawers to slightly tip and cause all the Lego to come sliding off. And in that moment, as I looked at all of the pieces that were scattered on the floor, I realized that my plans for that day were about to dramatically change. Especially when my daughter looked me in the eye and eyeballed me and said, Mom, we must fix this now. I want to rebuild my Lego display and you are going to help me. Can I just point out at this stage, Andrew and Freddie have left the room. They're gone. Andrew's gathered him, is comforting him, and I'm left in charge with Annika of rebuilding this. And so she cried out and just said, Mum, you need to help me fix this. And I realized that that is what we were going to be spending the rest of that day doing. And the title of my message today is called Peace by Peace aka rebuild the Lego display. Because you know, I think that we can probably agree that in life, things can come crashing down in a moment. I certainly think, you know, we're halfway through 2020 and this year is certainly revealing that to be the case. We, I remember earlier in the year just following just the devastation of the Australian bushfires and almost daily in communication with friends of ours and family members of ours who are living in the areas that were deeply affected. And in the right now, we are in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and also in a period of time where heightened racial tensions are just so much in the forefront of our minds daily and within society. In the midst of all of that, there's all the individual lives that we are living right now. Perhaps you're here today and, and you personally have experienced things in your own life that have just come crashing down unexpectedly. At times there can be marriages falling apart or families on the brink of falling apart. It can be something like in your studies and not passing a certain exam and, and not able to graduate. It can be a failed business venture, changes in finances a health diagnosis that turns your world upside down, the passing of a loved one. And sometimes too, things can come crashing down through no fault of our own and simply through the words and the actions or the choices of somebody else. And we're left there with all of the pieces. Indeed, at times we go through seasons where suddenly we're left with the memory of what once was and we're just left here with a jar full of pieces wondering how on earth we are ever going to rebuild things again because piece by piece by piece just seems so exhausting, seems so unachievable, and it leaves us feeling incredibly hopeless. But as I was preparing today, I just really felt that this was not going to be a how-to message. You know, it could be so easy to stand up here and say, right, on that note, here's a how-to message, three points on how to rebuild your life after a catastrophe. And you know what? That kind of message could work. There's a lot of great things in the Word of God that could go with that. But as I was delving into Scripture and just praying for each of you and thinking about this service, I really felt that this is not a how-to message but rather it is a reminder message. And I believe today that God wants to remind us that he is in the business of redeeming and rebuilding. He has already redeemed us. He's already rebuilt us. And we can trust him that whatever we are facing right now and will again in the future, he has already saved us. He's already called us. He's already redeemed us. He's in the business of redeeming and rebuilding. And we need to be reminded of that today in Copenhagen. I love words and I love the meanings of words and I love the definition of redeem. It means to purchase back. It means to rescue someone from an obligation or a consequence that really they should have to fulfill. It means to save. And the word rebuild means obviously to build something again after it has been damaged or destroyed. And so piece by piece, 
I want us to turn to a letter that we find in the New Testament of Scripture, and it's found in the book of Colossians. It's a relatively short letter, and I want us to focus today on a passage of Scripture which I really just trust and believe is going to minister to all of us in the ways that we need it to, because the Holy Spirit knows. And before I read out the particular passage to you, I want to give you a little bit of context, because as we know, it's so important when we're turning to Scripture that we have an understanding of of the overall context of what this letter is for. And so the book of Colossians, it's a letter, and it was written by the Apostle Paul. However, he was writing it whilst in prison, Isn't that phenomenal? Let's just stop there for a moment. Talk about your world, you know, falling and changing and being turned upside down. He's in prison in Rome, and yet he has the capacity and the heart to be thinking of fellow believers in the Colossian church. And so he writes them this letter. And the reason he is writing to the church, the Colossian church, is because it has come to his attention that there is a lot of false teaching beginning to circulate and he's wanting to correct doctrine. He's wanting to correct people's understandings of Jesus as Savior and of Lord. And so he's writing this letter of correction and correcting theology and warning them of false teaching that is taking place. And the overriding theme of this entire letter is a reminder of the supremacy and the centrality of Jesus Christ. He's essentially saying to the church, he's saying, you've got to remember that what sets Christianity apart is that we believe in a Lord and a Savior, Jesus Christ, and we believe that He is supreme. We believe that He is central. We believe that He is above and beyond any other name. That is what He is reminding this church of and reminding us of as the readers of this. And so on that note, I'd love to read for you Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. You can turn to it in your Bibles, maybe you have a Bible app or the scriptures will come up on the screen and I'm reading from the message version and what I particularly love is the subheading that's given for this in the message version. It says, Christ holds it all together. And I think some of you need to be reminded of that today, that Christ holds it all together, even when to us it just looks like a jar full of dislocated pieces. And so I'm going to read this to you. It says, we look at this son, and that's Jesus, and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into, came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. And not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe People and things, animals and atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. Isn't that beautiful? And what I want to do in the time we have together is I want to remind us of two things. I want to take this passage that the Apostle Paul wrote, and I want to use it to remind us today of what we need to remember when we find ourselves in situations in life when our Lego display is smashed to smithereens. When we walk into our bedroom and we see there on the floor all of these different pieces and we're left with the memory of what once was and are faced with the task of having to rebuild. For God is in the business, remember, of redeeming and rebuilding. And so the first reminder is this, every piece has a purpose in and of itself. I'll say that again, first reminder, every piece, 
every single piece has a purpose in and of itself. Verses 15 to 17 of the passage that I just read out is actually one of the strongest statements made anywhere in Scripture regarding the divine nature of Jesus Christ. If you're wanting one particular Scripture that clearly shows how that God was both fully God and fully man, this is it. The Apostle Paul is telling us that God is fully God, Jesus is fully God, and he's fully man. And this is a mystery. It is a mystery of that we accept in faith when we become believers of Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul, he's, rem he's reminding the Colossian church that, hey, Jesus wasn't just a kind man who did lots of good things. He wasn't just this fantastic, you know, super ordinary person who just happened to do just a few things. He wasn't just a prophet. He wasn't just a highly intelligent teacher. The Apostle Paul is reminding us that Jesus Christ is divine, that he is fully God and he is fully man, and that is a mystery to us, but yet it is vital that we are reminded of it, especially in times when everything comes crashing down. Because when we are reminded of Jesus' divine nature, it says in Scripture that therefore we see God's original purpose in everything created. That absolutely everything got started in Him and finds its purpose in Him. In other words, when we pick up each piece and we hold it in our hands, we can sometimes look at the piece and just think, oh, this is now so meaningless. It is hopeless. This one piece on its own, it means absolutely nothing now. It's worth nothing. But you know what? Jesus doesn't see it that way. As we are peering at the jar of all of the pieces and we're mourning the loss of what once was, Jesus is there and he's standing there at the doorway into that bedroom looking at the floor covered in all of the mess and he sees every single piece, and there is still purpose attached to every piece in and of itself. And when we have a personal relationship with Jesus, and we know that he is supreme and he's central in our lives, you will be astounded at how God takes every single piece and is able to use it to bless you. Every broken piece, every dislocated piece, every piece that on its own seems like it's now worth nothing, Jesus says, it's okay, I'm a redeemer. I am a rebuilder. I am your Lord and your Saviour. And just as I have already redeemed you, I can redeem pieces of your life. Jesus is the redeemer and the rebuilder. And he's able to take every single piece. And he says, there is a purpose. You can't see it yet. You only saw what it was once attached to, but I see something deeper in this and I am going to use it to bless you and to bless your future. Every piece has a purpose in and of itself and we need to be reminded of that when the Lego display comes sliding off that chest of drawers and ends up smashed all over the floor. Jesus will use each individual piece in the end. The second reminder that we get from this passage of scripture is this, every piece is a significant part of a bigger picture. I'm going to say that again, every piece is a significant part of a bigger picture. So not only is there a purpose attached to every piece in and of itself, it also plays a bigger part of a much bigger picture, and it may not necessarily be the picture that we had in mind, but Jesus is supreme, Jesus is central, and he sees the beginning from the end. He's the alpha and the omega. And here's the thing. The Apostle Paul starts off by reminding us of his divine nature, that he's fully God, that he's fully man, and yes, it's a mystery. But then when we look at verses 18 to 20, he then shows us the other side. He shows us Jesus, who is personal, and relational, and that is a game changer. Because when you understand that Jesus is not just divine, and he's not just supreme, he's not this 
detached God, however, He is personal and He is relational. And that's the game changer because Jesus didn't just die on the cross to save us for eternity in heaven once we've finished life here on earth. He's saved us so that we can experience a life of abundance and a life of freedom here on earth in the meantime, which is why Christianity is awesome. Christianity is amazing. I love being a follower of Jesus. Yes, there will be trials. Yes, there'll be tribulations. Yes, there will be problems. We live in a fallen world, but I serve a Lord and Savior and have a relationship with the Lord and Savior who has abundance in store for us life on earth, who has freedom for us to walk in during our life here on earth, not just saving us for eternity in heaven. He is personal and He is relational, which is why then we read in verses 18 to 20, it describes Jesus as being so spacious. Isn't that just such a beautiful image? I just see, you know, Jesus with arms wide open, so spacious, Room to embrace you. Room to embrace the person next to you. Room to embrace each and every single one of us. And not only that, but everything of God finds its proper place in Him without crowding. And not only that, all the broken and dislocated pieces, listen, they get properly fixed and they are fitted together again. Jesus, being a personal and a relational Lord and Saviour, he cares deeply about each and every one of us. He cares deeply for you, which means he cares deeply about every piece. He cares deeply about every area of your life. He cares deeply about all the different things that are going on right now. He knows you personally and he is a relational Lord. Every piece has a purpose, but each piece is part of something bigger. And I just want to really encourage you today, church. I want to remind you that, yes, Jesus, he is a redeemer and he is a rebuilder, but he's not finished yet. And that's what some of you need to hear today. You need to hear that, yes, we can have all of these pieces, And for us, it seems like it's over. It seems like, well, that's the end. It's all come crashing down. It's over. That's what might be going on in your mind. But Jesus is a redeemer. Jesus is a rebuilder. He is the author and the perfecter. He's the alpha and the omega. And he's not finished yet. While there is still breath in your lungs, Jesus is not finished yet. And what looks hopeless for you and looks like the end for you, Jesus is only just getting started. He loves the jar of pieces. He loves this because it is an opportunity for him to reveal himself as your personal Lord and your relational Lord. And yet he is also divine and fully God and fully man. He is supreme. Wow. We have him on our side. Every piece has a purpose in and of itself. And every piece is a significant part of a bigger picture. And I just really want to encourage you today, church, that no matter what sort of circumstances you may be facing, no matter what has been taking place so far, and yes, so much has taken place, and I'm sure that every single one of you has a story, that every single one of you could each stand up with a microphone in your hand and share something profound that has taken place within your life over the times that we've been living in recently. But I want you to know that while that cannot happen today in this service, that Jesus knows that story and he knows that event and he sees what has taken place. And we need to be reminded today that peace by peace, by peace, by peace, that Jesus is redeemer and Jesus is rebuilder. Amen. Can I have the team come up and join me? You know, after one very long day, Annika and I managed to rebuild the Lego display. (laughs) Yay! All five different Lego friend sets, this being one of them. 
And the reality is, for an adult, it wasn't the devastation that it was for my daughter. But I appreciate that in the life of an eight-year-old, when this is your treasure, that is a one-day catastrophe for her. But it was a bit of an inconvenience for me. However, what was really profound for me personally was during that day of working with my daughter to rebuild that Lego display piece by piece by piece. There was a lot of pieces by piece by piece by piece. God really used it to remind me and cause me to reflect upon a recent equivalent for my own life. And I wonder what my daughter's one day catastrophe could symbolize in your life. For me, it was the reminder of a recent four month season that from like the beginning of October 2019 that kind of came to an end towards the end of January 2020. It was four months where I personally in my own life just felt like the Lego display had come crashing down on the floor. Where in those four months, I was faced with watching parts of my life having to be pulled apart and, and dismantled in order to walk through some, some series of things that were taking place during that period of time. And it was hard. And I could identify with the cry and the tears of my daughter as she stood and suddenly saw all the damage. It took me back to the beginning of October and receiving some news about something in my own life that made me realize that, wow, my plans for the next few months, they're looking very different now. And as I sat there with my daughter and as we looked at what needed to be rebuilt, I suddenly realized, hang on a minute, there are instru instruction manuals for this. Here we were having heated arguments, picking up all of these different pieces and trying to remind ourselves of how to put it all back together. I was like, hang on a minute, Annika, that plastic bag up there, we've got all the instruction manuals that tell us how to put this all back together again. It was like a light bulb moment. And as we went, we pulled down the instructions and began flicking through all of the pages and, and reminding ourselves, step one, put the white one with this one and this one with that one, and oh my word. I suddenly felt God reminding me, oh, Selena, if only you would pour over my word as much as right now you're pouring over those Lego instructions. If only in seasons of brokenness and seasons of catastrophe, that just as you're right now frantically pulling for the Lego manuals and the instructions that you would turn to my word and you'd be pouring over my word because this is more than a Lego instruction thing. This is more than a manual. This is Jesus. He is the word. And we need to recognize that this year that we seem to be in and what's only ever going to continue to unfold right now, we need more than ever to be a church that is building our lives upon the foundation of the Word of God because it's within the Word of God that we begin to see how things can come back together again, piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. And as I was there rebuilding these Lego displays with my daughter, it took me back to those four months. It took me back to this powerful encounter that I got to have with Jesus as He stood next to me and bent over with me, picking up every single little piece and saying to me, you know what, Selena, put that one into there and now reach for that one and now go for that one. Don't worry about that one yet. That one's not important yet, but it will be, but you need this one and now you need that one, that pink one. It's still worth something. So pick it back up again and connect it to this one. It doesn't quite make sense, but you've got to trust me because I'm a redeemer and I am a rebuilder and I'm not finished yet. And what was absolutely astounding about that season in my own life was realizing that unlike this situation, where the goal was just to fix the Lego display, what I realized is, oh, hang on, Jesus is supreme. He is over and above and beyond anything we could ever hope for or imagine. He's not wanting to get things back to how they were. 
He's wanting to redeem and rebuild what's going on in your life for something even better, something that you may not be expecting but will blow your mind. And as I came to the end of those four months, things were nothing like how they were, but they are better and they are stronger and they are more beautiful. And I realise that Jesus is into building things piece by piece by piece. He is fully man and fully God and it's a mystery, but He's personal and He's a relational God and that is a game changer. And so I wonder today, as we begin to conclude, I wonder if this divine yet personal and relational Jesus is your Lord and Saviour. Because we read in Colossians 1.22, it says, but now by giving Himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you. Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together, whole and holy in His presence. And you don't walk away from a gift like that. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? And just in this moment, we're not doing this as a religious moment, but just to give you a moment of privacy. I wonder today, if you have accepted this gift of salvation, if, if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, if you personally have said a prayer that's invited Him to be supreme and central to your life. And in all of our services, we always give people an opportunity to be included in a prayer that welcomes Jesus into their lives. And in a few moments, I'm gonna to count to three And if that's you and you want me to include you in a prayer that says, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to redeem me and to rebuild my life. I don't want to do this on my own. Jesus, I want all the different pieces in my life to be filled with purpose and to have meaning attached to it. I want to see you build my life into something that is beyond what I could ever hope or imagine. And when I say three, I just want you to raise your hand. You may have never said this prayer before, or maybe you once have in the past, but for whatever reason you're just feeling today that you want to start afresh, then you can put up your hand too. And I love that in our church, we always extend this opportunity and this invitation because it is indeed a gift and no one would walk away from a gift like that of Jesus actually dying for you. Christ brought you over to God's side and he puts your life together whole and holy in his presence. So when I say three, just wherever you are, I just want you to raise your hand long enough and high enough so that I can see it, so that I know who I'm praying for. One, two, are you ready? Three, hands going up already. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Over here, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing, so incredible seeing all of these hands going up. I'm gonna give you a few more moments to join these people that are raising their hand. Thank you over there, God bless you. Anyone else? Thank you, you can put your hands down. That's incredible. You know know what church, we're all gonna pray together. We've got people that have raised their hands. And you know, even if you did not raise your hand, it's not a hand in the air that saves you, but it's a declaration of faith of our mouth. So even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know in your heart, it was going thud, 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 you know this is for you. You can still say this prayer, you haven't missed the moment. Amen. And so let's all together, church, are you ready to pray? Are you ready to repeat after me and join these incredible people that have raised their hands? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you that you are my redeemer, that you are a rebuilder. And I invite you into my life. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. And I ask that you would make all things new. Please forgive me for my mistakes. And I ask that from this day forward, that you would walk with me, that you would work with me, and that you'd continue to build my life piece by piece. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give a big cheer and a round of applause to every person that raised their hand and the people that made that declaration of faith. That's amazing. That's why we do this.
Absolutely phenomenal. And you know, just before I invite our lead pastor, Kat, to come back up to close our service for today and to explain to you a gift we have for every person that raised their hand, I'm just going to invite everybody in the congregation to stand to your feet, have a little stretch. It's so good. And I just really want to pray a second prayer open to anyone here. I said in the first service that as I was preparing this message, I just really felt at the end to pray specifically about three things. Firstly, you're here and you need God to bring change. That's the word, change. Or you're here and you want God to bring comfort. That's the second word, comfort. But then thirdly, and perhaps maybe a bit more unusual to hear, is that you need God to confirm And we can quite understand God bring change or God bring comfort, but confirming, what I mean by that is you're here today and you're on the brink of a decision. You've got some new ideas, you've got a new strategy in mind and you've done due diligence and you're doing all the pros and cons and you think you know what that new way forward should be, but there's something in you that's just saying, God, I just need you to confirm this. I just need you to really show me in a unique and specific way that yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm believing today that God is gonna bring that confirmation to you, that he's gonna bring change, that he's gonna bring comfort and he's going to confirm. So once again, if you'd close your eyes and if that ministers to you in any way just lift up your hands up to heaven just lift them up to him it's you saying yeah God I am open to you bringing change into my life I need you to bring comfort and I need for you to confirm and God you see every person with their hand raised and you know what that means And I ask God that you would now do what only you can do, that you would set in place the motion of change, that God, that the areas of people's lives that are stagnant and don't seem to be moving forward, that there's just this jar of pieces, God, that you would bring change, that you'd begin to show purpose again, that you would attach meaning once again to every element of their lives, that you would change, God, the circumstances. I thank you that you are a loving God who comforts. And right now, Lord God, it says that your word is so spacious and so roomy. And I pray, God, that people would experience your tangible presence of comfort, that they would have a sense that you are right there, right next to them. I thank you, Lord God, that social distancing does not stop you from entering our world in our circumstances with your presence, Lord Jesus. And now, God, please confirm. May this week unfold where different things take place where people just know once and for all what they need to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.